I was going to try and pronounce dimethyl pyrazole. I didn't do that. Too yeah, too <laughs> so, yes, Brooks, a PhD student and associate lecturer here at CSU, and um, the topics on board. Thanks. Awesome. So we're moving a bit more towards biology and chemistry now. Uh, my what I want to talk about today is the effect of liming on 3,4-dimethyl pyrazole phosphate. So not bad. We'll call it DMPP from now on. So I'm sure we're all familiar with the nitrogen cycle. Or parts of and we're aware that there are many ways in which nitrogen can be transformed within the soil. So organic matter can be broken down through mineralisation to produce ammonium. It can then also be taken up via immobilisation back into organic matter. The oxidation of ammonium to nitrate through the process of nitrification can occur and that nitrate can also be taken up via into organic matter or both into plant uptake. We also have losses in the nitrogen cycle. So the loss of ammonium via ammonia for lateralization, nitrate denitrification, or nitrate leaching. So today we're focusing on the nitrification process, which is a two-step biological oxidation of ammonium to nitrate via nitrite. And it's performed by a group of microbes that are classified as chemoautotrophs called nitrifiers. Now the first step, the oxidation of ammonium to nitrite, is performed by ammonium oxidizing bacteria or ammonium oxidizing archaea. The second step, the oxidation of nitrite, is performed by nitrite oxidizing bacteria. Today it's all focused on the ammonium oxidizing bacteria and archaea. So these nitrifiers oxidize ammonium and the bacteria like quite neutral soils, so relatively neutral you know, conditions, they respond well to high levels of substrate. So nitrogen application, their population um, flourishes and they're often found in you know, farming situations and things like that. The archaea on the other hand, remembering that archaea are considered extreme files in the whole range of microbes, prefer much more acidic soil, they, they dominate nitrification acidic soils. They don't require as much um, substrate, so they respond, you know, they grow quite well when there's not much ammonium, and then they're often found in native pastures where those conditions of acidic soils and, and lack of um, ammonium addition exists. So even though they both oxidize ammonium to nitrate, um, and then we know that if nitrate's produced, we do have the potential to lose it via denitrification or leaching, and we can have potential losses. So we can use things to, uh, called nitrification inhibitors to mitigate these losses. So nitrification inhibitors stop or suppress the conversion of ammonium to nitrate. And they do this by targeting either the bacteria or the archaea. And how, how this happens is they target an enzyme called the um, ammonium monooxygenase enzyme, or the AMO enzyme. And this enzyme is very important in the first step of oxidizing ammonium. <coughs> so we can break this equation down a bit more. And ammonium is actually uh, oxidized into a first intermediate called hydroxylamine, and then into nitrite. So this AMO enzyme is critical for this step to happen. And the inhibitors um, suppress this by targeting this step right here, right at the start. So it's a rate limiting step, and that's <coughs> how we maintain your nitrogen is applied as ammonium, and it won't be converted to nitrate. So you're you know, hoping to save um, losses from the, from the nitrogen cycle. So there's three main agricultural types of inhibitors that kind of exist around. The first one is disidiamide, which some of you may be aware of um, in the literature. It requires you know, lots of like lots of it to do the, the job of inhibition. The problem with this stuff is it's mobile. So it's mobile within the soil, but when it breaks down, it also forms a product that's very similar to um, something that plants will take up. And in New Zealand, there was a case where this was used, a lot of it was taken up by the plants, the cows ate the plant. This product moved from the soil, through the plant, through the cow, into the milk, and then entered the, the human food chain. So not, not ideal, not very good at all, so I've staked through that one. The next 
one is natural pyrin, uh, very popular in the United States in corn and things like that, because it's used with liquid fertilizer. However, it is volatile, you get a lot of losses that way and potentially carcinogenic. There's a bit of work being done there that puts a bit of a question mark. So <coughs> understandably, I said, no, thank you. The third one is my big mouthful over there, DMPP, which is relatively new, was released in 2000 um, from a company called BASF in Germany. And it requires very small amounts compared to DCD. It's easy to use, it's formulated on a granule, so you apply your urea, your nitrogen, and the inhibitors there ready. And it doesn't affect any target organisms, so it's just targeting those nitrifying populations. So I said, we'll give that one a go. Now, this is what it looks like. So DNPP is very effective against the bacteria. Remembering there's two types of nitrifying, bacteria and archaea. So we've got our mineral end here on the side in milligrams per kilogram and weeks along the bottom. Now, imagine you've got an ammonium source, say 100 milligrams per kilogram of nitrogen that you've applied, ammonium. Over the course of four weeks, this, you're expecting it to nitrify. So this will be oxidized, the ammonium will go down and your nitrate will go up, inverse relationship. If you apply an inhibitor, the red one, so we'll say DMPP, what you can expect is that your ammonium stays, your nitrogen stays in the form of ammonium for a lot longer, whereas you won't, and thus you won't get as much nitrate produced. So the benefit of this is if you've got ammonium in the soil, it's not leach, it's not denitrifying, it's sticking around, you're gonna get better plant uptake um, in large rainfall situations and things like that. However, so very effective against bacteria, not so great against archaea. So what this will look like, you apply nitrogen and an inhibitor, and there won't be any difference generally. It just doesn't work against archaea. You'll see that the ammonium is oxidized, nitrate increases, and um, you're gonna get losses, potential losses. So, again, coming back to this, we know that the bacteria like neutral positions, we know that DNPP works against the bacteria, inhibiting them. And thus we can say, and there is research shown that DNPP works very well at inhibiting nitrification in neutral soils. The archaea, on the other hand, like those acidic soils, we know DNPP is not great at inhibiting archaeal nitrification. And we know that DNPP has been shown that it doesn't work very well in acidic soil conditions. Now, our soils, what do we know about them? They're old, highly weathered. Generally, the topsoil in which where you would be applying this inhibitor is pretty acidic. Low organic matter contents. So we've developed farming practices to maintain, or, you know, keep those, that organic matter there. We've adopted minimum tillage. This is great, except when we apply lime and, and farmers aren't effectively incorporating that lime and you're leaving, getting situations of pH stratification. What does this look like? You've got your soil depth going down. It's, um, it gets, the soil gets more acidic as, as the profile develops down. So we know again, bacteria like that, relatively neutral conditions. So if they're existing up around that, you know, five and above, five and a half area, your archaea will be existing down here DMP works for over there, doesn't work here. So I had the question of, does that mean that the effectiveness of DMPP, will that change with soil depth? So depending on what seed you're planting and where you're putting that fertilizer inhibitor, is that gonna, are you gonna spend a whole lot of money putting DMPP on in a, at a four centimeter depth and it's, it might not work. So in the literature, there's a, there's a bit of research on how nitrifiers change with depth, but the depth is quite, the change is quite large between zero centimetres and a metre depth. We know there's a lot of work done on nitrifiers and pH, you know, the archaea, acidic, bacterial, neutral. We know that there's a bit of work about DMPP working on bacteria, but not archaea. We know that um, there's a bit of work on DMPP working in acidic, not working in acidic soils, working in neutral soils. 
and there's a fair bit of work done on pH stratification. But none of this has been brought together to ask what is the effect of pH stratification and if you then lime those soils, will that change the behaviour of DMPP? So I did a little experiment. I sampled soil from an acidic pasture in two centimetre incremental depths for the topsoil, so zero to 10 centimetres. This is the profile of what the soil looked like. So it was quite acidic after two centimetres. It was, it was you know, not conducive to um, plant growth, really. We then, I then had two lining treatments. So the soil that it was collected was in its native state, and then I limed the same soil layer. So there was you know, a layer that was as it was in the paddock and then limed that, so that the pH was above 6.5. I then applied inhibitor treatments to those, so a control of deionized water, uh, UAN at 30 kilograms per hectare, and UAN with an inhibitor. I put them all in jars, did a five week incubation, nice temperature, nice water, and then I did weekly destructive testing for ammonium nitrate and pH. So this is what it all looks like. I've got separated into ammonium, nitrate, and pH, and it will be done by soil depth. Now, for the zero to two centimetre depth, the, dot, the dashed lines are the soil in its native state. The solid lined, it's been amended. You can see the difference, the orange has the inhibitor, the blue is just nitrogen. So for the dashed line, where the soil is in its native state, it's quite acidic, there is no difference. The inhibitor did nothing. There was, you know, it did not stop nitrification. Once you lined that soil, to above six and a half, you can see that nitrification occurred for the blue solid line, where there was no inhibitor. You apply an inhibitor and it maintained your nitrogen in the form of ammonium for a, a lot longer. Same, you can see with the nitrate, it inversely increases, okay? And the pH is there. Same again for the two to four centimeter layer. You've got no difference when the soil is acidic, so the inhibitor didn't work. But once you lined that same soil, the inhibitor uh, nitrification occurred, the inhibitor um, stopped the oxidation of ammonium. Then we go to our below four centimetre depths, which is when things started to get a little bit interesting. You can see that the same thing happened. The acidic soil, nitrification, the inhibitor did nothing. But once you lined it, there was a substantial difference between the two. And this occurred for the remaining three depths. Now, uh, if you're all looking at and going, what is going on at week one? There's a giant peak for both ammonium and nitrate. Okay, so that I looked at that and I'll discuss that in a minute. But note that that occurred, and it also occurs with a same rise in pH of about 0.3 to 0.6 pH units for those lower depths there at week one. So, what's going on? Good question. It showed that DMPP was not effective in the acidic conditions, but once you limed them, it was, it was very effective at inhibiting nitrification. So the efficiency was greatest in the limed soils from that four centimetre depth down. What do I mean by this? You can see for the top two layers, the difference between the inhibitor and the treatment, th there was a difference there but you compare it to the substantial difference that existed for those lower layers there. Uh, this can, there is some studies that have shown in the topsoil, DMPP can be bound up physically by organic matter. So there is potential uh, like absorption of the inhibitor onto the, the organic matter there. So it's, there is potential that it decreases its effectiveness there. Five minutes. It showed that if you add lime plus an inhibitor, you're potentially improving your nitrogen use efficiency. So you're limiting the rate at which nitrates produce, which means potentially not losing it through nitrate uh, leaching or denitrification. And I propose that this is because you had a shift from your archaeal population in the acidic soil to the bacterial population um, as you raise the pH. And there are, are 
research that shows that the bacteria are very responsive to small changes in pH. So you only have to raise it a little bit and the, the bacteria, um, the population flourishes. This peak here, so it, it, it's quite prominent in these lower four layers here. And um, what's, what I'm, um, there's a bit of work that's been done that shows that decomposer bacteria, so uh, mineralizing bacteria and fungi, don't like to work, don't like to break things down below in those quite acidic conditions. So what I've done is I've raised the pH and there's trials that have shown if you raise the pH, you get a sudden increase in mineralization. So you're getting that breakdown of organic matter to ammonium. That ammonium can then be nitrified or um, exist as is. So there is the potential that at that week where that big peak was, I had a surge of mineralization and that um, the corresponding increase in pH, we know that when organic matter is broken down, it produces hydroxyl ions, which will increase pH, and um, that was shown in that increase there. And there's also some work on that. If you apply a nitrogen source, you're going to prime the decomposer bacteria or fungi um, and get them fired up. So these are in soil layers that probably haven't had a whole lot of organic matter breakdown and you'll, I've applied lots of nitrogen and um, promoted the activity of these decomposers. So the take home message of all of this work, if you use DMPP in acidic soils, it's not really gonna do much, but if you lime it, it will improve its efficiency. The greatest improvement will occur on the soils that are most acidic. So um, if you amend those soils, there seems to be a a substantial difference between the soils that were more new, uh, relatively neutral. So thank you very much. Thanks to my supervisors, Jason and Greg Doran, who's not here, and the Graham Centre. Thanks, Bill. We've got time for a couple of quick questions. John, Angus, and then Richard. When you have simultaneously uh, mineralisation going on, yeah. and addition of a, a DMPP, not only are you getting less nitrate, but you're getting an increase in ammonia. Yes. Yeah. Now, there's some literature that suggests that ammonium is a preferred substrate for immobilisation. So instead of it going, instead of the mineral nitrogen going to the plant, it may be going into the organic food. Yes. Yeah. So that could be an additional factor. So you really need to see how much of the added ammonium ends up in, in the organic pool. Organic pool, yeah. Yeah, so the, I did, oh, I haven't done that work, but the total recovery, so I applied 100 units of N, and for that one week, I had 200 units of N that came, so it came from somewhere, I got all this nitrogen coming into my soil system, um, but that would be something, yeah, it would be cool to trace where it actually came from, or where it then goes, because, after that, the nitrate decreases back to where it typically would have been if that peak hadn't occurred. And you know, I, I question where that where that went. Um, I assume it was immobilised um, because there were no plants growing in my system. It was a closed system. It was just soil in a container. So yeah, it would be cool to do some kind of N15 tracing work. But if you had a plant that was selectively taking up ammonia, yeah, that would be an additional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, improve your nitrogen efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Richard. That was excellent. A lot of your mechanism depends upon the impact of the lime on the population of bacteria. I mean, yeah. Are you actually directly measuring those populations? Yes, it's happening soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Great. I do some yeah. qPCR work and hopefully, fingers crossed, that will show um, prove me right. Yeah, because those ratios down the profile of bacteria and yeah. fungi. Yep. Yeah, critically important. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully we'll do some profiling of what, who was there, what they were doing, okay. what happened between the acidic and the limed mm -hmm. soils. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, we might draw to a close there. Sorry, we're moving on. Keep